Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and welcome to my first video for the CAC Love Summer Art hashtag art crawl event. Today I'm going to do a art journal page and when I think of summer art and when I think of summer in general here in Tucson, Arizona, the first thing that I think of is the sun. We have a blazing hot sun that warms us up and gets us to very, very high temperatures. And we love it. We love it hot. <laughs> People who come to visit or think about coming to visit say, oh no, it's going to be way too hot. It might be over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's awesome. We love it. <laughs> so um, that's what I was thinking of when I made this page. And I'm starting out with color burst pigment powders. Today I'm going to be using two products that I haven't used very much. I got these for my birthday in March and I think I've only used them one other time. And then the other thing you'll be seeing I got for Christmas and I think I've only used it one other time. So I'm going to be making something using these two products. This art journal that I'm working in is my Nature Spirit art journal and last year it traveled all over the world it went ever like to Australia and to to Europe and like all these different places um, and it was it was a journal swap type of a situation where you sent your journal and each month it went to a different person and they did a page in it and you had to have a theme so I made this journal and then I asked them all to do pages with what's in the nature around where they live. So it's a, it's a pretty special journal. I haven't made another page in it since, but there's several pages that need to be completed. And I figured sun was a natural part of Arizona, so I would go ahead and make a page. So you can see I'm just spritzing water, and this is, this is a watercolor paper. This little spread right here is watercolor paper which is untreated I haven't put anything on it I'm spritzing it with water from my pink water bottle and then sprinkling on the powders in different colors and then spritzing again and the the powders are very very in intense color I did stain my fingers and it's they're still stained <laughs> I'm not sure when it's gonna come off <laughs> need to put a lot of lotion on and uh, I keep forgetting to put my hand protecting lotion stuff on and what I'm doing now is I'm using Liquitex matte medium in the liquid format and I'm just rolling over it quickly with my brayer because that stuff is watercolor the color burst is watercolor so if I'm to put another layer of something over it it's going to run and move and change this effect that I have and I don't want that so I seal it up with matte medium liquid but I can't roll over it very much you can even see if you look at my palette there that some of the blue came up on my brayer if I was to roll all over it a lot it would get all the colors mixed up and gross so just kinda one quick roll over it and then that's about all you get so it's a li it's not 100 percent sealed but it's a little bit sealed it it's still slightly reactive as I'll find out later but <laughs> not much not bad and so now I'm drawing and when I put the colors down in the the format that I did with the the lemon yellow and the the um, ochre and then the orange in that area and then the burnt sienna down at the bottom and the uh, I think it's cobalt blue on the side I had an idea of what I was going to be making already and where I wanted the colors to be they're not exact obviously you can't in any way control those powders they'll go where they want to go <laughs> but you can you know try a little bit so now I've got out my Bombay inks and these are India inks but I'm going to be using them kind of like watercolor they're liquid and some of them are opaque and some of them are translucent I really haven't used them before some of them are still sealed so I, I tested them out with some dripping and stuff like that which I think this week I did actually do something with them dripping down a tag but um, I've never used them in this way. The thing about them is once they're dry, they're permanent because they're India ink. They're not a watercolor. 
but they behave a lot like watercolor. You can thin them down with water. You can blend them with water when they're wet. Um, pretty cool. I'm probably going to be using them a lot more because the color is extremely intense, which you know I like that. If you've watched my videos before, you know I'm I'm into intense, bright colors. I That makes me just happy, 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 happy. <laughs> I love bright colors. And these are bright and intense. And also, it's perfect that they are, are permanent when they're dry because it makes me a person like myself is going to be putting more stuff over things all the time. So if I can make a layer that's going to dry permanently but still behave like a watercolor, that makes me happy too. So I'm pretty si excited about these and I think there's another set, another color set perhaps, and I'm going to put that on my wish list as something I would like to get later. Um, I have a friend who likes to buy me art supplies <laughs> because she knows I like them. So <laughs> I'll probably put put the other color set. I'm not sure if it's like more earth tones or I'm I'm not really sure, but I'm pretty sure there is another one. So now I've got some white acrylic paint and this is just a titanium white student grade and I'm using that to kind of highlight and it it blends in as long as the the uh, inti ink is still wet it still will blend so it's perfect there wasn't a white in the set of India inks so I had to use an acrylic but that's fine it's working just fine and I'm still sticking with the uh, red, orange, and yellow, and then a little bit of white for the sunshine. I was getting things a little bit too wet, and things kept, the, the colors kept seeping into the, um, in between of my pages, because I didn't put tape down, but if I put tape down, then it would have, that, you could, you would see the tape, because it would react differently to the mediums I'm using, since I wasn't planning on gessoing the page, so... That's why I didn't, but I did get some seepage, and the way the book was laying, it wanted to everything wanted to run to the middle. So that's the reason that you see me sometimes actually painting and heat tooling at the same time, <laughs> because I can multitask like that, you know. <laughs> but it worked out because I was like trying to dry one area and still paint it on the other area, and. So where I live in Arizona, we see sun images everywhere. A lot of folk art, um, a lot of Mexican folk art um, has suns with faces like this. Lots of times they'll have like curly, um, the, the, the rays coming out will be kind of curly instead of straight like that. I made them. A lot of people even just in my neighborhood have metal sculptures of the sun on their houses. They're all over the place. So I see these type of images all the time. So this might not be exactly my style because it's prob I'm probably imitating something that I saw somewhere, who knows, but I like the bright colors and I think that my faces tend to all turn out the same. They've all got big eyes, they've all got small noses. Um, usually my lip, the lips on my faces are a little bit more lush than that, but this is probably a a male sun. I believe sunshine is usually supposed to be depicted as a male. Don't know why, but anyway, it has thinner lips. So then I've got that white paint again and I've put on some clouds and then I'm looking at the different earth tone colors, which there's a burnt sienna and a raw sienna and then one that they call terracotta, which is kind of a, a well, it's terracotta. It's the color of red brick. So I decided to use the mid-tone to start out with. And I'm adding shadows. And you'll see me going back and forth as I'm highlighting and shading and highlighting and shading and trying to get the sun's face the way I want it to look. I, I want it to be a benevolent sun. I want it to look, you know, nice. <laughs> like it's not going to burn you up, even though you're in Arizona. If you didn't have water and sunscreen, you could get burned up. But it's not the sun's fault. And then I'm just taking some of the brown ink and just kind of uh, intensifying 
the area down there below where the hills are. So this is just a process. I guess I'm actually going to use three products. I was thinking I was only using the the color bursts and the India inks, but now that I think about it, I'm also going to use a deco art fluid. And of course, then there's there's the acrylic paint too. So I guess that's actually four. And then if you add in my Posca pins, then that's five. So this is definitely mixed media. I've mixed everything up again because that's how I roll. Just mix them all up. That's what I like. <laughs> so I'm filling in the sky a little bit and putting some shadows underneath my fluffy little clouds. And then when I go with the watered, uh, what did I decide it was? Cobalt blue? I can't remember. Anyway, it kind of has a turquoise effect over the yellow because it is a little bit translucent. And so I just go back in with the actual turquoise India ink and just kind of even that out by adding some turquoise to the other side. It's not completely evened out, but a little bit. I could have just left the yellow and orange around, a, ha a halo around the sun, because, you know, it could be the intensity of the heat coming off it, but I did fill it in with the sky colors. Because I felt like it. I don't know. And now I've got the darkest brown, and I'm going to say it's burnt sienna, but I'm, I don't know. It looks darker than that. I guess I didn't do a very good job of looking at the colors. I was just winging it and uh, doing whatever color I felt like at the moment. Darkening up the eyes and the shadows around the nose. The nostrils. Nostrils. And that thing underneath, which I can no longer remember the name of it, but I know that Tamara Laporte calls it a lip dip. <laughs> oh, and did you see what I just did there? <laughs> the bottle? I figured out that the that there's a little perfectly sized hole that you can set the bottle in on the plastic tray. How brilliant is that? How smart are those Bombay people? Because I was setting it there and just thinking to myself, I'm going to spill one of these. I'm going to spill one of these. One of them is going to tip over. I just know it. And then I realized that there's an actual holder for the open bottle. <laughs> I thought I was <laughs> pretty smart once I figured that out. <laughs> Brilliant, even. <laughs> Good job, human factors over at Bombay, for figuring out that people will spill your little bottles if they don't put if you don't put them in a holder. So these little cheek circles. I'm trying to decide what color I want them. So I keep like putting the white over and then saying no, no, I don't like that. So I, I blot it off. And I put the orange over it and then I'm like, ah, it needs to be darker, it needs to be lighter. Can't decide. Okay, this is when the liquid, um, of the fluid deco art acrylic comes in. And I love these paints. They're also really high highly highly pigmented and liquid so that you can just use them directly out of the bottle like that and this is the green gold color which is kind of an olive green and I'm making some cactuses these particular cactuses are the national or not the national but the state tree of Arizona <laughs> they are actually huge um, very tall and the name of them is saguaro, which has a G in the middle of it, which confuses people. People want to say saguaro, but it, it's actually just saguaro. They're also protected. You can't cut them down or dig them up or run them over with your truck. If, you, if somebody finds out, you'll get in trouble because they're protected. And they're all over the place around here where I live. If you're out in the middle of the desert where nothing is around, there's no buildings, and it's just you in the desert, they really are like a forest. They're very tall. They're taller than, you know, humans, and they seem like a forest. So you would actually call it a saguaro forest. 
we have a Saguaro National Monument, actually two of them, that are big parks where they're just all over the hills. Pretty awesome. It's not something that you see in other places very much. I mean, they are in some other places like down in Mexico, but not a lot of them. They're pretty unique. So I went back in with the white acrylic. I decided that I wanted the face to be uh, light on one side and shadow on the other side, even though light comes from the sun. <laughs> so if the sun is not shining, where is the light coming from? That is the question. That is the eternal question. Your light source. Where is your light source if you're painting the sun? <laughs> Another one of those conundrums that I get myself in. But I decided that there was indeed a light source. Um, not sure where it's coming from, but it's on the left side of the face. So that side needed to be lighter and the right side needed to be darker. But yeah, no idea where it's coming from. The moon doesn't shine as bright as the sun, so the moon couldn't be casting light onto the sun. Yeah, I'm geeking out about that, sorry. <laughs> Maybe the sun is turning. Or no, the sun doesn't turn. It, we're just going to pretend it's turning its face away from something, okay? Something really bright. Maybe an alien ship. I don't know. Okay, so now I've got a little bit of the titanium white and I'm mixing it with the green gold to add a highlight on one side of the sorrel cactuses to make them look a little bit more dimensional and stand out a little bit more from the page, in case you were wondering. Because I got off on a little tangent there, <laughs> which happens a lot if you watch my videos. They're looking a little bit better. You can see them a little bit more now. But in this fantasy type of a page, definitely the sun is the biggest and most powerful thing on the page because that's really how it is. Especially here in Arizona where it gets to be over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, now I've got my fine tip Posca pins. I could not complete a project without them, I'm pretty sure. And I wasn't, at first I wasn't going to do this whole outline everything thing. I was thinking I wasn't going to do that. But there was some pencil marks left where I had drawn in with my, uh, with that drawing pencil that I don't like. My new mechanical pencil hasn't arrived yet. And, uh... I know I told you all about how my mechanical pencil broke. It was my favorite one. I'm very sad. <laughs> so I had to get a new one and I ordered it from Amazon. Hasn't come yet. So I'm using just like a regular drawing pencil and the pencil lines were still there. I could still see them so I decided to go ahead and put the black lines to kind of obscure those annoying pencil lines that I had. I didn't think they would erase at this point because I've already I've like put so much stuff over the top of it. I was pretty sure it wouldn't be able to be erased. So we're going to go for the illustrator look and outline everything. I would have probably done it anyway. I mean, let's be realistic. I always do that. <laughs> I think I just like it. I don't know. Then I'm adding a little bit more brighter highlights with the white Posca pen. Mostly on that left side where the light from something would be shining. <laughs> Here we go again. And then I'm just lining the one side of the cactuses to give them a shadow. I don't outline them, outline them completely. I'm pretty happy with that. So I decided to add some words. These are from a song. Do you want me to sing it for you? Here comes the sun, little darling. Here comes the sun, and I say, 
it's all right. That's what was in my head <laughs> when I looked at the page. So that's what I put on the page. Can't believe I just sang on video. Wow. Somebody shoot me. But yeah, that's what I'm writing. And um, I left the little darling part off because I wasn't talking to a little darling. I was just saying, here comes the sun and it's all right. In fact, it's awesome. We love it. Desert rats like me love it. This is my handwriting. I don't often write on pages with my handwriting. I mean, obviously I'm carefully drawing the the letters. This isn't like actually how I write. My actual handwriting is illegible. <laughs> but usually I tend to print out my things or um, stamp with stamps or use something that's already printed because I don't really enjoy my own handwriting but this looks okay it's all right ha see it's all right that's what I'm gonna write at the bottom <sighs> I think I had too much sugar I'm feeling very hyper <laughs> there we go I say it's all right so I hope you've enjoyed this video and please go check out the hashtag love summer art art crawl. You can find hundreds of other videos with summer themed art. Also, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, comment so that I know that you're here and that really helps me out. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye bye.